say, mister? No. You wear it tonight, all right. They weren't kidding. Get rid of the cab. Meet me at our place. Okay. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm glad you like it, miss, because you've got to wear the darn thing. <laughs> I'll do my duty, sir. Joan, there's quite a history of that necklace. Pennion women have worn that for almost a hundred years. Peter Van Wyck, stop talking like a ghost. And Joan, dear, don't let that thing get on your nerves just because it's valuable. I never did. No, treat it like dime store jewelry or you have to wear a policeman with it. <laughs> <laughs> you adore Joan, don't you? I'm letting her marry my boy. I hope the rest of the Pinion clan is as generous as you. Stop worrying and be generous yourself when you pour me another martini. Thank you, Bob. May I try them on for a moment? Of course, Rose. Trent, something troubling you? The necklace. It's insured, of course. What kind of an executor do you think I've been to the estate? Well, I mean, those diamonds must be quite a temptation to the underworld. Temptation isn't always confined to professional thieves. Here you are, my dear. Oh, thank you, Peter. I'll take me jewels now. I hate to part with the beauties. Nonsense, Rose. You've never gone in for jewelry. You can't wear what you haven't got. Six o'clock, folks. I'm sorry, but I'll have to leave you. And so will I. It's going to take me a good two hours to dress and redecorate my face. Want a lift, Rose? No, thanks. Trent will see me home. Now, Joan, don't lose your courage tonight. The Penyon clan is turning out en masse to look you over. Well, you look them over. And don't be too critical, will you? Because I do want you to marry my Bob. I won't let anything interfere with that, Mother. Come on, girls. Break it up. You can pick me up at 9 o'clock. Right. I've been waiting to hear from you. He just left to take Joan home. And I said, those things aren't around anymore. You mean, Penyon has the necklace with him? Yes, he just left. Thanks. I'll be seeing you. No, no, you won't. I've kept my end of the bargain. Now we part company. Rose Waverly. Where do you meet class like that? Oh, you meet a lot of people when you travel. Don't I know? That's how I met my wife. You're going to meet her again in a few minutes. Penyon's driving her home. He's got the necklace with him. Now listen, Bodine, you're making a big mistake. That necklace is chicken feed compared to what Joan's gonna have when she marries the guy. Don't try to sell me that again. But don't you see, if she knows I'm alive, she'll never marry Penyon. And we can kiss a beautiful meal ticket goodbye. All I want is the necklace. I'm getting it tonight. You playing ball? No. I don't like it. Oh, you don't? I'd hate to hear the police found out you weren't dead. Wouldn't you? You're tossing away a gold mine. an hour. Darling, I'm going to try awfully hard. What for? Well, I know you want to be proud of me. You know I am. It's just starting to rain again. Oh, here. Be sure you're wearing these when I come back. Very good, sir. Oh, 
about you, huh? Pete. In person, not a ghost. So I see. You wanted a divorce, didn't you? Well, I saved you the price of a lawyer. No, 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 don't worry, baby. I know all about you and Pinion. You go right ahead and marry him. Did you come back just to tell me that? Uh-uh. This is what I want. No, no, please, please! Don't be a fool. Listen to me. All you gotta do is say you were held up. Oh, no, Pete, no! Get away from that. Don't you hear that siren? That's a silly sound, isn't it? It's for us. You're supposed to stop. Ah, oh, but, sir, it's so long since we've been chased by the police. It reminds me of the good old days. We had the whole force after us. Not just one measly traffic officer. Pull up, yes. Oh, think of the disgrace, sir. A ticket for the lone wolf. The lone wolf is tucked away in mothballs. I am a gentleman of leisure, and an honest one, no matter how much it pains me. If I may say so, sir, I don't know how you stand it. Oh, look out! You won't hurt. No, I'm all right. Please let me go. Well, I'm terribly sorry. Let I'm... me go, please! All right, wise guys. Oh, no, you don't. You're all in this. But, officer, this young lady isn't with us. Oh, no? And I suppose you didn't crash a red light doing 65. But I insist, officer, this young lady was just... And I suppose you didn't go through four safety zones. And I suppose you stopped for a police siren. Go ahead, explain that one. I suppose I don't like policemen. <laughs> no, you don't. But I don't know these men. I wasn't with them. And I suppose you were just walking down the street minding your own business. Get in that car. You're under arrest. All of you. I have a strong suspicion he means it. Get in there. I'm very sorry. Lord Jameson. Yes, sir. It would be a pity to run over such a sweet-tempered policeman. I think you'd better let me drive. Get in there and follow behind me. Out. Sorry, no can do. I'm afraid it would only make things worse. But you must, you must. I know it's a nuisance, but don't worry, they can't hold you. The police, if they're looking for me, maybe they found out already. What could they find out? What have you done? Nothing. Nothing, I tell you, but they won't believe me. They think I killed him. Lady, you are in trouble. I think we'd better talk this over. Watch him, folks, the disappearing policeman. That little man, sir, he isn't there. Go on. And now, young lady, suppose you start at the beginning. Just what did happen.
excellent manoeuvring, sir. I couldn't have done much better myself. Thank you, Jameson. And now get us a taxi cab. We're changing cars. Oh, but why, sir? When that cop wakes up, he'll call out the Marines. Hurry! Oh, of course, sir. How stupid of me. <laughs> Do you know, sir, I've been away from this thing so long, I've grown a bit rusty. Forgive me, sir. Will you get that taxi? At once, sir. Go on, Miss Bradley. You discovered that Pete Winnick was dead. And then? Well, there isn't much more to tell. I saw the necklace was gone. I was frightened. And then I... You ran away? Yes. Not very pleasant for a girl about to be married. <laughs> One taxi, sir, at your service. You're going with me. Oh, yeah. Back to your apartment. Two bullet wounds. And Rennick never fired a shot. Well, so much for Mr. Pete Rennick. Now then, you ought to forget everything you told me about this, understand? Yes. Jameson, look him over. Very good, sir. See if there's anything that might identify him. Letters, coat labels, anything. How about his fingerprints, sir? Won't they reveal this gentleman to be the young lady's spouse? Well, we'll have the chance. It. His record may not mention a wife by name. Get started. Very good, sir. And, uh, Jameson. Yes, sir? Make your fingers behave. Don't take anything else. Sir, you wrong me. What's in there? My bedroom. Come with me. <coughs> Here's your story. You came in here, closed the door, and started to dress for the party tonight. You laid out your gown and your slippers. And, uh, what have you? And prepare to take a bath. Where's the bath? In there. Oh, yes. Come on. You were taking a bath. A little hot, a little cold. You were in the tub. Follow me? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yes? I'm all through, sir. Good. Now get undressed. Jameson, outside. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Lovely girl, sir. Lovely. Jameson, I'm ashamed of you. This is strictly business. Did you find anything? Oh, only this, sir. It's a tag such as tailors and cleaners use for identification purposes. N. Papa Consus. Mm, sounds Greek to me. <laughs> oh, I think that's rather good, sir. Well, hold on to it. Been raining, you know, sir. Hmm. Nice view of the river from here. Well, here we are, ready, willing, and able, I hope. Was this window open before? I'm sure it wasn't. Why? That's odd. Well, here's the rest of your story, and we're finished. You were in the tub when you heard two shots. Two. You slipped into this robe and rushed out. Threw open the door and saw the body. And the necklace? You left it on the desk in here. When you saw the body, you fainted. Fainted? The medical examiner will be able to tell how long he's been dead. So we'll have to allow for the time you were out of the apartment. You don't know anything but what I've told you. You don't know Pete Rennick. When you recovered consciousness, you called the police immediately. Understand? Whatever happens, I'll never forget how kind you've been, Mr. Lanyard. You'd do better if you forgot my name and that you'd ever met me. It isn't a name a girl in your present position should know. Now, you see, miss, the police don't like us, and it's oh so mutual. Good luck. You'd better call them. Operator, give me police headquarters, please. 
Now, sir. Now, sir. All we have to do is locate the murderer and the pinion necklace is ours. All we have to do is pick up the car and head for the snow. I'll be waiting at the apartment. I was in the bathtub and suddenly I heard the shots. I slipped into this robe and ran out. And I, I threw open the door and found him here on the floor. Well, thank you, Miss Bradley. Well, I used to raise these myself. Pelagonium cavernosis. During you made it. How many shots did you say you heard, Miss Bradley? Two. Two is what I make it, Inspector. Thank you, Doctor. Go on, Miss Bradley. Then you uh, telephoned the police, is that right? No. Not right away. Oh, you saw him and you fainted. I'm afraid I did. Well, from the absence of rigor mortis and from the body temperature, I should say death hit him about three quarters of an hour ago. But I wouldn't swear to it. Well, that fits very nicely, Doctor. You can take the body with you. Okay. Boys. If you're all through, Inspector, I'll take Miss Bradley home with me. What brought you here? Use your eyes, Dickens. He came to take her to the party. That's just what I thought. Uh, I, I, I'll look inside. You'd better stick around, Mr. Pennion. If there are any more questions, they'll hold to morning, won't they? I'd like to get her out of here. You can, Mr. Pennion, just as soon as my men complete their routine investigation. She took a bath, all right. The tub's wet, this towel was used, and these clothes laid out like she was going to get dressed. I told you she was. She told us. When are you going to believe it? Inspector, you told me never to believe nothing in a murder case. Well, don't expect too much from the autopsy. No, I won't. Here's what we found on the stiff. No identification. Not a thing. Just some matches, some cigarettes, some small change, a pen knife, and a key. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Inspector? Hey, Miss Bradley can go now. Thank you. Well, Tulip of Antarctic. <laughs> You're a beauty. Sure is. Oh, Inspector. Yes, Jackson. This lock wasn't forced. That's funny. Come on, Joan. Say, Inspector. Oh, Miss Bradley. Yes, Inspector Crane. You came into this apartment alone, didn't you? Of course. And your key? I left it in my purse. I, I must have. Where is your purse? In my bedroom. Can you explain this? It fits. So that man must have picked it up. From her purse, which was in the bedroom? No key. Did you give this to him? Certainly not. Let's see. In your alibi, you What do you mean, alibi? Miss Bradley doesn't need one. Who is the dead man? I don't know. Was he waiting here for you, possibly by appointment, when you came home with that necklace? I told you what happened. Get dressed, Miss Bradley. You'll have to go down to headquarters for further questioning. Look here, Inspector. You're carrying this business too far. Think so? Are you trying to say that she killed him? It wouldn't be the first time a woman killed a man. And she ain't telling all she knows, either. Why should she hold anything back? Mr. Penyon, when did you first meet this girl? About two years ago. She came to work for my mother, as secretary. You're wasting your time, Inspector. I hope you're right. See if she's ready. Okay, lady, we're waiting. Slock! Well, break it down. Break it down. You two go downstairs. Head her off. I'll go down this fire escape. No bother. But Inspector. I told Jackson to have her followed if she left here by herself. How little we know about women. Even when we want to marry them. <laughs> That's why I stick to flowers. Cars downstairs, sir. Good. Wouldn't it be wiser to make a fresh start in the morning, sir? No, we're leaving tonight. 
night, sir. Tonight. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, take your time, sir. <laughs> Charms like fairy gifts fading away. Thou would still be adored. That Jameson is enough. <clears throat> Let thy loveliness fade as it will. That Jameson is more than enough. Sir, I was just in the middle of recording. Is that what it was? I'd have you know, sir, I spent sixty dollars on singing lessons, a dollar down. Ah, and... then you must meet Mr. Ipswich. Ipswich? Does he sing too, sir? No, he's a lawyer. He'll get your dollar back. If we drive all night, we'll be at the snow in the morning. How can you think of leaving, sir, with a diamond necklace down on its knees, fairly begging for our address? That's the best reason in the world. I don't want you buttling to a warden. Hi, Jamie. Oh, sorry, no card sharks tonight. Boss in? No. And not to me. No. Uh, well, let's see. <coughs> Mike Lanyard. Hello, Mike. I told him you were out, sir. Uh, he doesn't know we're partners. Partners? Jameson, open a window and air the room. Just one window, sir? Same old Mike Lanyard. Always kidding. Well, I can see you aren't exactly on relief. How are they treating you? Don't be cordial. Let's have the bad news. What do you want? That's no way to talk to a pal that you're cutting in on the Penyon job. Penyon? Jameson! Yes, sir? Do we know anybody named Penyon? No, sir. You were at the girl's apartment tonight. I saw you. That's why we're splitting the necklace two ways. Shall I throw him out, sir? You're working with the Bradley dame. I've got you cold. And for your silence, you want half of what I haven't got. You're smart. <laughs> it's going to be fun hearing you tell the police what you were doing there. Rennick was working for me. I had no reason to kill him. Who did kill him? That's why I'm cutting in. She was very lovely. You always knew how to pick them. Thanks for the compliment. Miss Bradley, you can't come in now. But I've got to see Mr. Lanyard. Shh. Go away and come back later. Oh, come right in. Jamie, that's no way to treat a lady. Oh, Mr. Lanyard. Oh, Miss Bradley. I didn't know you were back in town. As if you two weren't working together. Cut the comedy. Let's be one big happy family and talk this thing over. Mm. Sit down. Later. No, I say now. Mr. Lanyard says later. He means later. Shall I toss him out now, sir? Well, no. Put him in here. Don't be a chump, Mike. You need me. There's a murder rap in this, and I'd hate to see it go to you and the kid. Just let me take care of that. How does he know? He saw us coming back to your apartment. But I can handle him. Here's his admission in his own voice that he was after the necklace. He'll talk some more, so we'll give him a fresh record. Find one that Jameson's voice hasn't sorted. Yeah, this'll do. Uh, tell me. Sit down. Tell me what happened. Something went wrong, or you wouldn't be here. They found my door key in Pete's pocket. How did he get it? I still can't remember. Things happen so fast. He must have taken it when he pushed me into the room. I don't know. 
Well. Well, forget it. We'll go on from here. Who was in charge? Crane, Inspector Crane. Ah, my old pal. He was going to take me down to headquarters. Ha <laughs> ha, but you ran away so he could follow you. I wasn't followed, I'm sure of that. <laughs> well, unless Bloodhound Crane has changed a lot since I last saw him, he's exercising my doorbell right now. But don't worry, I've spent some of the best years of my life trying to dodge Crane without much better luck. And where are we going to put you? Here. Quick. In here. Hold your breath. And don't sneeze. Well, Inspector Crane, the old plant lover himself. Hello, Lennon. What a surprise. I'll bet. And Dr. Watson, I believe. Mind if we have a look? Not at all, Inspector. Come right in. What are you drinking? Nothing. We're here to look. Oh, got a telephone? Murder. Tanya necklace stolen. And a girl who refuses to talk is missing. You won't find her in that box, Mr. Dickens. It's for cigarettes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, things you smoke. The girl, she was traced to this address. Oh, I see. And when you remember the lone wolf lived here, the case was solved. We're searching the whole building. Just as a matter of form. Diamonds. Just your kind of a job. With murder on the side? I'm ashamed of you, Mr. Dickens. I always said you'd wind up in the chair. You're too smart. Have a look in there. Must you? I have a guest. I'm anxious to talk to him. Oh. Get rid of the gun, quick. Use this. Well, good evening, Inspector. Would you like a brush off, too? Search these rooms. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Inspector, this is Mr. Bodine. How do you do? How is your brother? Did you call the hospital? Yes. Yes, he isn't much better. The doctors seem to think he has an even chance. Oh. Well, what's this? Sedum, stone crop. I haven't seen one of those in years. So you still go in for rare plants? Uh-huh, but I never had a set of Well, you've uh, got one now, Inspector. Something to keep your hands busy. Well, thanks. You'll give it better care than I can. Thanks. She ain't in there, unless she's got a trapdoor. Oh, don't you know, Mr. Dickens, they don't put trapdoors in modern apartments anymore? Oh, yeah? Yeah. What I have to hide, I hide right out in the open. Oh, yeah? Hey, you! Get away from that bookcase! Don't bother Flatfoot, I'll manage. Flatfoot? Flatfoot's right. See if you can keep out of trouble with this. Come on, come on. Oh, Inspector. Do a fellow a good turn. Drop Mr. Bodine at the hospital. He's anxious to get back to his brother. All right, Mr. Bodine. Well, thank you, Inspector. And thank you, Mike. Well, not at all. I'll get in touch with you and let you know. Yes, do that. Good night. Good night, Inspector. It's nice to have seen you again. Wait for me in the car, please. For a time, Lanyard, I almost believed you'd quit, that the lone wolf was through. Too bad you couldn't hold out. Aren't you jumping to conclusions, Inspector? Don't take me for a fool. You're up to your neck in what happened tonight. You know where the Bradley girl is. You don't think I'd make myself an accessory to murder? I'm afraid you already have, Lanyard. Well, 
Want to take me in? No sense making two trips down to headquarters. I'll wait till we find the girl first. It won't be long now. I'm all ready to leave, sir. In fact, I'm, I'm looking forward to the winter sports. We're not leaving. Oh, but, sir... Get the bags out of the car. Well, they've all gone. You can come out now. Careful. Are you all right? Yes. I, I heard what Crane said. I dragged you into this Oh, and... never mind me. Jameson, my hat and coat. I'm going to tell him the truth. It's too late for that. He's in no mood to believe the truth now. Besides, there's Bodine. I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me a little longer. But it's so unfair. They're accusing you now, and you haven't done anything wrong. And you haven't either. Bodine's our man, sir. He killed Rennick and is trying to involve you. No. Whoever killed Rennick has the necklace. That lets Bodine out. All we have to do now is find the necklace. And for that, I can use your help. I'll do anything. Good. Ten minutes after I leave, Jameson will take you down the back way. Get her a taxi. She's to meet me at Nick's place. Understand? Yes, sir, of course. That's it. Why couldn't he take me with him? Well, you see, miss, the police are probably watching the house. Mr. Lanyard has to play decoy. Oh, taxi! Dickens, I can see you. Don't play peekaboo with me. What's the idea? You're supposed to follow me. Two can ride as cheaply as one. Get in. I'm wise, you. Don't try and pull anything funny. I wouldn't dream of it. Know any good jokes? Know what Confucius say? Yeah. He say, smart wolf always wind up his fur coat. <laughs> 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 and Confucius also say, wise guy, only fool dumb bunny he see every morning in mirror. <laughs> That's a killer dinner. <laughs> I gotta remember that one. <laughs> Pay the driver. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> dumb bunny in me. <laughs> hey! Hey! I tell you, Inspector. Good patient. Just where the doctor wants you. Any trouble? No. Isn't that a police whistle? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. What do you want? Mike. Ah, hello, Nick. Mike. <laughs> Joe, meet Nick Lutzi. Glad to know you. When certain people have certain things to sell, they come to Nick. That's right. Well, come on in. Be with you in a minute, Mike. Oh, Joe, come on down. Who's the guy, huh? Who's the guy? Who's the guy? Ever hear of Mike Lanyon, the lone wolf? Lone wolf? Gee, Mr. Lanyard, I'm sure honored to meet up with you. I am. I am. Hello, Joe. <laughs> Heard an awful lot about you. I did, I did, I sure did. You're big time stuff, ain't you? <laughs> ain't you? <laughs> I'd chop off my arm just to be with you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Well, Nick, how's business? Just pickings, not much. Guys like Joe here make my trade. Yeah, yeah, just some stuff I found in the subway. In the subway. I was going uptown mine. Okay, Joe, powder. Well, so long, Mr. Lanyard. So long. It's been a pleasure meeting you. A pleasure. Same here, same here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, what's on your mind? The Penyon necklace. Whoever stole it tonight killed a man to get it. That's why I figure he'll get rid of it quickly. And I want to know who he is when he does it. I'll get right on it. Use every angle, Nick. Contact the out-of-town mobs. Wire Chicago and the coast. Don't be afraid to spend money. I've got to know who has that necklace before the cops do. Got any hunches? Not one. What's the collar like? Joan, here's where you come in. 
I've checked the insurance paper so often I could describe each stone in my sleep. All right, go ahead. Well, there were 48 French cut diamonds. Come in, Dickens. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you see, I... he made a fool of you again. Oh, no, listen, Chief. <laughs> Did he take your brains with him? No, no, listen. No, I... I take that back. He'd have no use for him. Listen, Chief, it was a getaway. I had him by the hand, and then I didn't. Oh, holding hands, huh? Why, well, he pulled a gun on me. Too bad he didn't use it. All right, all right. But you listen to me. I've got a general arm out for Lanyard, and if I don't pick him up before the night's over, why, I, I'll resign. You won't have a chance to. You're safer here than anywhere else. It isn't likely that our friend Crane will come back here again tonight. Jameson! I thought you might need this, sir. I suspect you've had enough for both of us. Beg pardon, sir. It's all right, Jameson. Beg pardon, sir. It's all right, Jameson. I'm trying to say, beg pardon, sir, but Bodine phoned twice and he insists upon seeing you again. Oh, well, see that it doesn't happen. I'll do my best, sir. Cigarette? No, thanks. I wonder where Bodine fits into all this. How did he and Pete know that Bob had the necklace when he took me home? Well, that young lady has been on my mind for some time. And the answer isn't very pleasant. What do you mean? Remember when you first saw the necklace this evening? Yes, we were having cocktails at the Penyons when it arrived. There were six of you in the library, weren't there? Yes. Mind giving me their names and phone numbers? Of course not. But why? One of you must have tipped off Bodine that Bob took the necklace away with him. Oh, no, they're all old friends. <laughs> You'd be surprised what old friends have tried to do to me. Mr. Lanyard? Yes? If the police suspect us of murder, hadn't I, hadn't I better pack the bags? Oh, you don't like winter sports, Jameson? Correct, sir. But I prefer a cold toboggan to a hot seat. <laughs> Jameson, you're a coward. Have I ever denied it, sir? Uh, Mr. Pinion, please. Why are you calling, Bob? Mr. Pinion? Inspector Crane speaking. That's right. Do you want me down at headquarters right away? Well, what's happened? Have you found Miss Bradley? Uh, not yet, but uh, I think you can stop worrying about her. I'll tell you later. I'll be right down. You seem to stand in pretty solid with him. That last maneuver, sir, I'm afraid it's a bit beyond me. Bob met Crane in Miss Bradley's apartment. He spoil things if he happen to know where I'm going. Oh, I see. Of course, sir. Oh, Mr. Van White. Inspector Crane speaking. Yes, Inspector. What is it? What? But, Inspector, I've gone to bed. If you're not at the Penyon house in half an hour, I'll send a squad car after you. <laughs> He's going to have me fired. Who's next? Arthur Trent. Arthur Trent. Really, I'm disappointed. Very disappointed. It's hard to believe that none of you noticed what Bob Penyon did with a $100,000 diamond necklace. Inspector Crane, I resent that. My guess are people who can keep their eyes off diamond necklaces. Are you sure of that, Mrs. Penyon? Look here, Inspector. You're overstepping your authority in this investigation. Oh, Mr. Trent, I've been neglecting you. I understand that you started into this room and then changed your mind. Why? I saw that Miss Waverley was busy telephoning. What was she saying? I didn't know you'd be interested, Inspector, or I'd have listened. Oh, Mr. Trent. What was your call about, Miss Waverley? I wanted a taxi. Oh. You can get your hats and coats. We're going downtown. What on earth for? To be identified. By whom? We've picked up a man who saw the killer leave Miss Bradley's house at the time of the murder. Someone in this room knew that Bob Penyon had that necklace in his pocket when he left with Joan. You mean some one of us in this room? How dare you? I'll apologize downtown. You all had better get your things.
Now, just a moment, Miss uh, Waverly. What is it? Sit down. Care to tell me about it? What? There's nothing to tell. People don't phone for taxis when there's a dozen of them on every street corner. Really? Really? Well? Why did you phone Clay Bodine? You're working with him, aren't you? No. And you may become an accessory to murder. No. No, all I did was to tell you about the necklace. He... Why? I owed him some money. Gambling? This summer on a boat coming home from Europe. Oh. But Dean's specialty is cheating girls like you. That's all, Miss Waverley. Thank you. You're going to arrest me? No, I'm not. But I don't understand you. You don't have to. <laughs> That's our little secret. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? I'm Inspector Crane. For the gentleman who resembles a wet hen. Where is he? Where, where is he? Where is he? Where's that faker? Yeah, where's that faker? Shut up. Shut. Gone, huh? Well, let's hear from you. He just handed me these flowers and said they're for you and ran. My companionless? Where I come from, they call them fool's caps. <laughs> What was Lanyard telling you? Lanyard? Isn't he Inspector Crane? I'm Crane. He's Michael Lanyard, the lone wolf. Why should he come here and question us? There's a lot about Mike Lanyard that I can't figure yet. One thing, how he and Joan Bradley became such close pals. He knows Joan? Yeah, well enough to give her a hideout. And that spells plenty grief for her when we nail him. Plenty grief. Don't it? Hello? No, Mr. Lanyard's not in. Who's calling, please? Penyon? Bob! Never heard of her, never heard of you. Let me talk to him. John! John! Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Miss Bradley. He may have heard you. Well, I have no reason to hide from Bob. Very likely not, but you know what Mr. Lanyard's orders were. Yes, I, I know. I'm sorry, James. Oh, forget it, Miss Bradley. I know just how you must feel. I remember once. It was Paris in spring. The lilacs were in bloom. There was a fragrance in the air. And she was a chambermaid. Quick, get in. Hi, Jamie. Where's Lanyard? He's not here. You can't come in. Any objection to a little search? I told you that... No objection. If you touch anything, we'll have to have the whole room fumigated. Now, uh, you get in there. Now, just a get moment, in. sir. You... Get in. Good hunting, sir. Why, Miss Bradley? This is a pleasant surprise. I didn't think you'd still be here. Let's get to know each other. Come on. Rustle up a drink for us, my good man. Don't you, my good man, me. Where's Lanyard? He doesn't tell me his plans. Same old Mike. Cigarette? No, thanks. I see you got your name in the papers. 
I guess I'd be wasting my breath if I asked you where the necklace was. You would be. So that's what Mrs. Penyon looks like. Who are the big shots with her? Friends of hers. Who's the mug on the left? That mug happens to be Peter Van Wyck. And uh, that's Bob Penyon. And this? Arthur Trent. Rose Waverley and... What makes you so interested in these names? Who said I was interested? Well, then it won't matter if I don't tell you the names of the others. Lanyard's certainly wising you up fast, sister. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to use your telephone in private. You just step in there. You too. Your drink, sir. You really didn't expect me to drink that knockout brew you concocted, did you, Jamie? It was worth a try. Please. Come on. In here. Aren't you carrying this thing a bit too far? I'm sure you won't hear me now. I wonder what made him want to telephone all of a sudden. It was someone he saw in that picture. Who? I don't know. Oh, if we could only hear. <laughs> don't you worry, miss. At this very moment, a recording is being made of his voice. Jameson. <laughs> Hello? This is Clay Bodine. I didn't think you would know me. Wait a minute, don't you hang up. Unless you want to tell the police why you killed a man tonight. No, I'm not bluffing. I saw you come out of Joan Bradley's apartment just after Pete Rennick was killed. Why, well, I haven't told anyone yet. All I want is the necklace you took. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll give you just 15 minutes to get to my place. 538 West 72nd Street. Apartment 424. That's right. Good. You're smart to play ball with me. Hear anything interesting? You're new on the police force, aren't you? I don't remember you. Can't get your tongue? You must be Michael Lanyard. In which case? I'll have a look inside. Where's Joan? I take it from the look in your eye that you're Bob Pinion. Where is she? Quite safe. Seeing that she's safe is my job, not yours. Let her go! We'll argue that point later. Suppose you investigate that while I answer this. Hello. hello. Oh, hello, oh, Mick. Hello Good. Fast work. Let's have it. I got the dope you want, but it ain't what you expect. That necklace was broken up and sold in pieces a year ago. A year ago? Oh, no, that's impossible. You're all wrong. It was only stolen tonight. That ain't what my pipeline says, Mike. Have I ever been wrong before? No. No, you haven't. Did you find out who it was that sold them? Not a thing. Whoever did covered themselves up. Even the fence didn't know. Well, thanks, Nick. Thanks. The record! The record! Is it a record, sir? Record? What record? Bodine was here. He knows something about the murder. Oh, what does he know? He recognized someone in this picture and locked us up while he telephoned. There is a record! There is a record! Bodine's end of the phone call! Oh, quick, let's hear it. Oh. Oh, the... The whole thing was my idea, sir. Hello? This is Clay Bodine. I didn't think you would know me. Wait a minute, don't you hang up. Unless you want to tell the police why you killed a man tonight. No, I'm not bluffing. I saw you come out of Joan Bradley's apartment just after Pete Rennick was killed. 
I haven't told anyone yet. All I want is the necklace you took. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you just 15 minutes to get to my place. Oh, baby, no. A fine time to sing a song. At least this proves Bodine knows who the killer is. Where can we find him? I'd be there right now if I knew. I didn't think he'd be listed. Excuse me, sir. What? I have an idea. We're doing badly enough without any more help from you. This cleaner's tag, sir, that I found on Pete's body. He and Bodine worked together. Maybe they lived together. Jameson! Yes, sir? You're either a genius or an idiot. Yes, sir. You all stay here. I need. I'd like to help. Mr. Lanyon doesn't need any help. He works alone. Sometimes an extra pair of hands makes a miracle possible. And just now I could use a good $10 miracle. Let's go. Yes, sir, but how about me? Well, you stay with Miss Bradley. Yeah, but I'm no lady's maid, sir. Papa Gondos? Who wants to know? Inspector Crane, Homicide Bureau. Uh, I don't do anything. I always respect the law. I have open and shut alibi. I'm in bed. Why, uh, I, I must sleep eight hours every night. Uh, maybe nine. This yours? Oh, please. Please, Inspector. Please. Can I speak to my lawyer? Hey, please. Hey, listen. listen. We're trying to trace a man named Runick. Pete Runick. He gets clothes cleaned here. We want his address. Oh, ne, 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 komu, ta ne fi mame. Ir se do profes. Kad se mi jeste, minas se vik soje do. Na, kona matu. Renik. Yes, Renik. I tri soje smo skrili na nas. Kad se mi jeste, minas se vik soje do. E dojne, na, na. I mikse has na uritiši et autamas. Mikse has is parapans. His address, please. Good. I'll deliver these in person. Mix a hasis now, it is yet a leptamas, nam 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 Excuse me, please. Excuse me, please. You, you fix it up, huh? Uh, so, so Mr. Rennick cannot complain, eh? <laughs> Don't worry. He won't. Oh. <laughs> He's dead. Oh. Oh. Dead! Tora ta brume to belamas! Ti za kanu me psihimu! Za se faru ne mesa! Murder! Ze za seksana do electric chair! Oh, 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 but what for you making all the excitement, sir? Za pune postoja kane se piti, ves? Tora ha tikame! Ha tikame! You hold the back of the evidence! But if I forget the pens, they cannot arrest me for it! Mistake is it, see? Kane katiti, skips the zapati, so... Oh, I love you. That's all right, that's all right. I call the inspector and I tell him. Hey, hello, hello? Give me the police to the headquarters. Uh, uh, uh. Pants? No, I haven't lost any pants. What's that? No, I don't want an extra pair of pants. Say, what is this? I got the Mr. Rennie's pants. Another pair like the ones I give you when you come to my store. I came to your store? That's right. Say, am I a tall, handsome man? That's right. About six feet? That's right. With a little brown mustache? <laughs> That's right. What's that address again? Thanks. Get me a squad car. 
Inspector. Later, later, later. An important witness in the Rennick murder. You can tell me in the car. Tell him in the car. Emergency only. The man we want has been here, too. Where does that leave us? Ever see an eight ball? window in Jones' apartment, the one overlooking the river. It was wet just like this. She said it had been closed all the evening. What are you getting at? Windows don't open themselves. Bob, I think I know what happened after Rennick was killed. I think I can close this case before breakfast. Yeah? It's closed right now. Have a look. Slug under his heart and powder burns on his coat. You were mighty anxious to get rid of Bodine early this evening. Why? You're whistling in the dark, Inspector, and you know it. Bodine was dead when we got here. You'd swear to anything right now to save that girl of yours? This the man? That's him, all right. He was with the Bradley girl in his car. When she was supposed to be home taking a bath. Can you explain that one, Mike? I haven't got time to explain. Bodine knew who killed Rennick, and he invited him here. Look, Inspector, I can beat any charge you make against me because I've got Bodine's story on the record. But that won't give you the answer to Rennick's death. I think I've solved that, too. Just give me four hours... Four hours from now, you'll be charged with both murders. Dickens, come him. Mr. Pennion, I do believe an emergency has arisen. Right. Come up. Well, don't do anything foolish, boys. He's green with a gun, and it might go off. You can't get away with this. A man can only do his best. Hello, Jameson. Put Miss Bradley on the extension, and both of you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Miss Bradley, will you take the extension, please? It's Mr. Lanyard. Yes, Mr. Lanyard. Joan, I want you to go see each person who is at the Penyon House tonight. Tell them I've solved the case that I know where the necklace is, at the bottom of the river, directly below your apartment. Say that I'm using a diver to recover it. That's all. Got it? Yes. Pardon me, sir, but doesn't that place Miss Bradley in grave danger? Yes, it does. Joan, you don't have to do this, you know. You... you think you'll find the murderer this way? Well, the only way to make him show his hand is to let him think he has a trump card up his sleeve. That means you. Afraid? Scared stiff, but I'll risk it. How do you feel? If Joan's willing. All right. Let's go. You listen to me, Mike. Later. You're all wrong. Later, Inspector. You're making a mistake. Later. What is all this? Bob, hold the fort. Come along, Inspector. You know the kidnapping law. This is no kidnapping, partner. We're a sister act.
sorry to have to tie up, Crane. You think I'd better gag you two? No. Well, I can't have you spoiling my act. You were only here as an audience. You was much chance of finding a needle in a haystack as locating that necklace in one dive. Did I promise that? All I said was that my story might bring the killer here. Why should he risk his neck? You've come to stop me, or to find out how much I know. Do you mean to tell me if one of those four people show up, he's your man? Inspector, you're beginning to catch on. Mr. Peter Van Wyck. Ah, oh, Mr. Van Wyck. Curious about my yachting party? Why, I couldn't believe it when Joan told me. Sending a diver after the necklace? Which one is Joan's window? Third floor on the end. But I don't understand. Why should anyone want to throw a valuable necklace into the river? Well, I know that one, I'll tell you. Ready, boys? Ready. Let's go. trajectory from Miss Bradley's apartment plus the drift of the current. Watch those hands. But my nose itches. Scratch it for him. Sir, if he finds that necklace, I'll vote Democratic. If you're allowed to vote. What do you mean? Hello there. Hello, Mr. Lannett. Hello. Peter. Hello, Trent. I thought I'd better be here in case this wild idea of yours works. What makes you so positive it won't? A thief doesn't throw a fortune into a river. You don't know this bird as I do. Partner. Two men show up. I suppose the killer had an assistant. Glenn wants to come up. You mean he found it? He found something. What extraordinary luck. He hasn't been down ten minutes. He's a minute overdue. That gun down before it goes off. Might as well. Lanyard's got the job done by now. You're under arrest. What do we do now? We know where Lanyard is. That's just what I was thinking. Bring him along. Ah, this is Pinion. What's all this nonsense Joan was telling me? Nonsense? Who ever heard of such foolishness? Grown men digging in a river for diamonds. Where is my necklace? Don't tell me you really found it. Not yet. Of course not. But you won't. You're very positive, Mrs. Pinion. Good work. Stand back. Stand back, you folks. Stand clear of that airline. Your necklace, all right? Just as I thought. Paste. Phony diamonds. Paste? Young man, you're crazy. Possibly. 
Well, I can see now how these stones were good enough to fool anybody. They'd fool anybody but an expert. But they're still paste. That's impossible. They weren't imitations when Peter returned them to the vault. Of course not. He made the switch some time ago. Peter? Next thing, you'll be accusing me. Your necklace was broken up and sold a year ago. But don't worry. The insurance company will get it back in time. Peter! Tell this insane person that... Careful, Mr. Van Wyck. You killed two people with that gun tonight. You know a lot, don't you? I know a lot now, yes. You went to Jones' apartment to get that necklace before anyone realized it was paste. Pete Rennick got there first. When he saw you, he made the mistake of reaching for his gun. Then you threw the necklace into the river. The rain left a telltale wet spot on the sill when you opened the window. So that's how you guessed it. Now, put down that gun. I want 12 hours, and you'll give them to me without calling the police? If you want to see Joan again... What have you done with Joan? She's with Jameson. No, she isn't. They're waiting on the dock. Jameson! 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 Nice try, Lanyard, but it doesn't fool me. You'll be told where the girl is when I'm safe. You heard him? Yes. I didn't even try to stop him. I don't know where Joan is. I know, I know. What's the idea? What's your fire for? You unthinking flathead. Why didn't you let him go? What did you want him to do? Shoot me? What do you think? Well, Mike, he isn't badly hurt. Where's the girl? Come on, talk. Peter, where is she? Where is she? Jameson, you were wonderful. Oh, I was better miss in 1910. <laughs> <laughs> you two had better get married at once before anything more happens to you. You really didn't think I'd let her set a trap without a bodyguard. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Mike, there's one thing still puzzles me. How'd you find the necklace in the river so quick? I didn't. Here's all I found. Uh, handcuffs. Uh-huh. My bracelets. Uh-huh. <laughs> and if you want the genuine phonies, you'd better start diving. Be a pal, Mike, and retire. Hmm? I've never been out of retirement, partner. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, sir. He put her in a boat, and I haven't had an oar in my hands for 20 years. Yes, I noticed that. Yes, it was, sir. <laughs> Good luck, Mike. Good luck, Inspector. Well, Jameson, this time we're really off. Oh, but, sir... We'll take the train. Oh, but, sir... I'd hate to see you miss the winter sports at Lake Placid. Oh, isn't there anything that'll change your mind, sir? You bet there is. Me! You're under arrest for avoiding arrest. And now, sir, you know why I you don't, don't like, like policemen. policemen.